Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about how to harmonize product information from different retail data sets using entity resolution. And we have a great demo for you today. It was created by Vinit Patel, who you'll see in just a bit. Uh, also acknowledging Swathi Jasti for leading this project. And my name is Prabhat Nanasetti. I'm one of the industry leaders here at Snowflake on retail cons and consumer goods. Let's first talk about the business problem. Well, a lot of retailers as well as CPGs have access to many different data sources. They may be bringing in data from companies like GS1 for UPC information or uh, scraping product information from retail websites. Unfortunately, one of the issues that results is that many of these different data sources may not have a common way to talk about a particular product, in this case, uh, a package of bounty paper towels. The more data sets that you have and even going to different countries and getting different data providers, the more this problem shows up. And the average CPG spends anywhere between half a million to $2 million per year just trying to model and harmonize this data together. What does this look like? Well, here's a common use case where you may have a retailer um, and a brand that has different classifications of product information. If you look across these, you see that sometimes the UPC code that itself doesn't add up or the descriptions of the different products uh, can be different between two different companies. Their way to classify things might be different, as well as all the additional attributes that you may have about the flavor and the package size might be recorded and stored in different ways. And the issue with this is that it can prevent being able to monitor competitive prices, looking at the same product that visually you could tell that uh, is the same across multiple retailers might be harder to do from a data standpoint. It prevents executives from seeing their full business status. Uh, they may be missing different data sets, different retailers that they're selling through uh, to make daily, weekly, or quarterly decisions. And then it just slows down using AI and ML because the problem is that the data itself doesn't talk to each other and being able to stitch together the full truth becomes much harder. There's been many ways to solve this in the past. Uh, a very common way is just using different heuristics and uh, regular expressions to basically pick out different parts of a sentence or a string describing a product. You may choose to use various uh, machine learning models, category to identify categories, maybe brands. Um, and then you start to get into more advanced methodologies like named entity recognition, or maybe supplementing that with a large language model that can help provide additional information on classification. So I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Vinit Patel, who's gonna show you a great demo of an office supply store and looking at matching these products together. Vinit, please take it away. Thanks for the intro, Prabhat. My name is Vinit Patel. I'm gonna be walking you all through the demo for entity resolution for product matching today. But before we get into the code, I'm actually going to take a look at the data set we used to create it. On the left-hand side, I'm going to navigate to data products. This takes us to Snowflake's internal marketplace full of data and products from our providers. Today, we're going to be working with something from SimilarWeb LTD. Now, going to the provider page, I'm going to be looking for a data set that involves Amazon and e-commerce products. Right here. Now, as the title suggests, this is going to be the product views and purchases from the websites of many of these companies. Now, there are e-commerce platforms and retailers such as Amazon.com, Walmart, Home Depot, Target, and so on. But since we're looking for products that we can match and have overlap between, we're going to be focusing on Office Depot and Staples, since they have a variety of office supplies products. Now, also on this page is an example of the business needs, aka what this data set can be used towards in terms of other demos, as well as a small data dictionary, which has showed us the column names and example values for what we can expect from this table. Now, to add this to my account, I'm going to click Get on the top right. It's ready to query, there's no storage cost, so this data set's free to work with. And there's a few options here. You can rename the database and you can add other roles that can access it. So for our purposes today, I'm just gonna give it to public, which means that every role can access it. Now if I click get, Snowflake will create a worksheet and add it to my account. This lets me query the data immediately and also comes with a default query. Oh, this query isn't quite right for our purposes. To better explore the data for what we're trying to do, let's replace it. With this query, we can actually take a look at products from both Office Depot and Staples. So, as you'll see, we have the same column values we saw from the data dictionary. The site, the product, the title, the estimated views, and estimated purchases. Now, the issue, as we mentioned with the industry, and as Prabhuth gave you some context on, is that in this product column, there's a lack of uniformity in how the products are coded. Even within just staples, for example, there's product codes that have just numbers, 
with ones that have letters mixed in. And there's even less uniformity between retailers. So the focus of this demo is to match products between Office Depot and Staples on the title. Now, some of the titles have dimensions, such as 9 inches here or 40 inches here. There's also descriptions, such as L-shaped desk or stacking storage box. Now, these different units and different measurements and different counts that they come in all need to be factored in. How are we going to tackle that? For that, let's switch over to the notebook. In this notebook, we'll be doing entity resolution from text for product matching via product titles. We're going to start off with just a few simple Python imports, setting up a session in Snowflake, as well as creating a schema to store our tables. After that, we're going to be looking at the Staples and Office Depot products we just saw in some Rub LTD's dataset. The only thing to really note here is we're going to be taking a clean title. We're essentially replacing any special characters from the title with blank spaces. This gives us a cleaner title to actually use Snowflake Arctic's embed function on, which creates clean titles for every products from Snowflake and Office Depot, as well as embeddings for them for us to match off of. To give you an idea how that looks, let's take a look at staples right here. We have the staples.com site, a product code, a title, as well as a clean title. And then we have the breakdown of brand, main category, and subcategory, along with the estimated views and estimated purchases we spoke about, and then a clean title embedding. This is what we'll be using to match this product with other products from the other catalog. We did the same for Office Depot. And to give you an idea of how clean product titles look, we've also had this small table graded. From there, we're going to be creating vector cross and similarity scores. Essentially what this is doing is it's taking a staples product from the staples products table that we just created and finding every product with the same brand from Office Depot. This narrows the search scope quite a bit, and the cell should only take about a minute to execute. From there, essentially it's taking vector cross and similarity a function that takes the vector embeddings we just created and finds how similar they are to each other. With this table not ready, let's take a look at how it looks. In this similarity scores table, we have staples product information, starting with product code, then title, then clean title, and so on. We have then the same information for Office Depot products. The only column we've really added here is a similarity score product on the side. This is the product of the vector cosine similarity function. This takes into account the two clean title embeddings we showed earlier from both products and calculates how similar they are. Now, I've set the barrier of entry for this table to be 0.8, and I've set it to descending as well. However, all these staples products on the left side could be used in multiple matches. Since all we filter by is brand, as long as the brand of the Office Depot product is the same, this Lenovo idea pad could be paired with multiple other products. For that reason, we're selecting the very top matches for each product, since we only want to find an identical match between one and one products from each table. From there, we're setting a minimum similarity of 0.8, like I just mentioned, and creating a table of matched products. From there, we're passing this into AI-driven entity resolution. We're using Snowflake's Cortex Complete function here, and passing in the model Mistral Large to do manual reviews. From there, we're giving Mistral Large a prompt. We're basically explaining our scenario to it, about how we're doing product matching between two data sets, and giving it quite a few instructions. We're essentially having it do four main things. One is to return a boolean indicating whether matches are true or false, aka approving or indirecting matches by itself. The second is deterministic on whether the match is approved or not. If it is approved, it gives us a unified title of the two products. If it's rejected, it gives us a list of the differences between the two products. The third is to find, again, a unified brand, just to confirm that these two products are from the same thing in case anything has gone past us. The fourth is a unified subcategory, which is a bit more vague between the two product datasets. Let's take a look at JSON that output. We have to first parse it to get the columns that we're looking for. In this new process matches table, we have the staples and office depot product information from earlier. But if you look towards the right, we have a new column, match decision, which we're then further breaking down into a few more columns, is match, match details, unified brand, and unified category. If a match is rejected, Match details become a list of the product differences between the two. These can be pretty general, such as capacity, quantity, and color, or very specific, such as the size of rings, and then specifications for Mistral as such. If the product match is approved, we have a unified product title, which describes both products since they're both unique. From there, we're simply splitting it to two tables, approved and rejected. Approved matches are all approved product matches which means that a unified title is provided for them. Rejected matches, as we said before, have instead product differences, shown here. Since our interest is in finding analytics and insights from the approved matches, we're going to make a streamlit application based on this table. 
For the last bit of this demonstration, I'm going to show you a chatbot built using Streamlit and Snowflake's Cortex Analyst. This chatbot is built on a semantic model, a YAML file generated on the approved mattress table from the Snowflake notebook we just ran. To begin with, let's look for Apple products being sold at both retailers. My natural language query is being fed into Analyst, which translates to a SQL query and then runs it across the database. The output of that SQL query is then translated once again into natural language. In this case, it found three products for us, but it says that a product seems to be listed twice. So if we look in the results, there's actually four rows in this table. But it realized that these two are duplicates of each other, and only fed us one as an output. It also shows us the SQL query that Cortex Analyst came up with. Another question I could ask it is to find me specific product types. For example, let's say I want to find headphones at both retailers. Once again, my query is being taken in, converted to a SQL prompt, and then ran against the database. In this case, it found me Sennheiser Bluetooth headphones being sold at both Staples and Office Depot. Now, to emphasize, we are looking at estimated views and estimated purchases of products across the websites of these retailers and e-commerce platforms. This means that if I want to find the specific sales and purchases for a certain product between the two, I can. So for example, let's look at a Sony XA2 cell phone. So in this case, Cortex Analyst came up with a SQL query where it took apart the dimensions, sort of features, of the product I was looking for. It looked for Sony, it looked for Xperia, and it looks for XA2. And then it finds the sales for those between Staples and Office Depot and compares them. In this case, it told us simply that it sold 5.47 in Staples and 3.52 at Office Depot over the time period. In that time period, though, Staples sold more than Sony. Lastly, I can also look at the product view to product purchase conversion since that is specific to the data we have. So in this case, if I ask it to find me the three products with the highest purchases to views ratios at Staples, essentially what this does is it returns the products with the highest view to purchase turnover ratio. This means that the more that people view it, the more people will buy it at a higher rate than other products. Now this is unique to the data that we have because again, we are looking at product views and product purchases on the websites of these companies. In other scenarios where the data you have revolves more around the stock of a certain item that companies have or their pricing information, you can do things such as competitive price tracking or supply chain management, as Ruth had mentioned. There's a widespread use case for this. It solves an issue of a lack of uniformity in the catalog systems across retailers, and the applications are near limitless. I'll hand it back to Prabhuth now for a quick summary of what we've been through with this demo. Thank you, Vinny, for that great demo. All right, everyone, let's do a quick recap of what we saw. So we saw a demo for how to harmonize product information. And the use case here was to match similar products that we saw between retailers that didn't have any common product codes, but they had a common title. And this typically is done to understand competitive dynamics. Maybe you want to compare prices of similar items or look at other competitive sales information. So the steps we saw that Vinny demoed were, first you bring your product information data. You may have this stored from your own uh, public web scrape data. We used this great similar web data from the Snowflake Marketplace, which makes for a great um, set of sample data to start from. Second, we generated vector embeddings for all of those product descriptions. We first cleaned them, and then we generated those vector embeddings, and you saw that within uh, the Snowflake notebooks. Next, we conducted the matching, and then we refined those matches using Cortex AI and the easy ability to serve up a large language model that uh, you saw before. Once all this is done, uh, this is great, but you want your non-technical users, maybe a promotion specialist or uh, one of your sales and merchants, to be able to use that data to understand the different competitive dynamics and maybe other products that exist around uh, the, the market. And so, we built a Streamlit app that sourced all that data and made um, a simple chat interface um, for a non-technical user to use. So all of this uh, creates a really easy har data harmonization project that can be helpful for your retail or consumer goods use cases. With that, thank you so much for listening to our demo today and hope hopefully you start harmonizing your data very quickly.